Now we continue our series of conversations with 2020 presidential candidates. Joining me, billionaire activist and philanthropist Tom Steyer. Tom Steyer, welcome to the News Hour. Judy, thank you so much for having me. So let's talk about your decision to get in. In January, you said, I'm not running for president, but then last month you said, I'm going to run. But by this point, there were, what, two dozen other yeah. Democrats running. Why should people vote for you? Well, my basic thesis on what's going on in the United States is that we have a broken government in Washington, D.C., that corporate cash has bought the democracy, and that the only solution is to push power back to the people, to retake the democracy on behalf of, of, by, and for the people. And for the last 10 years, I have been organizing coalitions of ordinary American citizens to take on that unchecked corporate power, and we've been winning. Well, let's talk about one of the, the uh, issues that, is, that are motivating many Americans today, and that is in the aftermath of these terrible shootings in Ohio and Texas. You have a number of other Democratic candidates for president this week uh, condemning President Trump's rhetoric, condemning white supremacist ideology. They're also talking about gun control. What would your priority be to stop these kinds of incidents as president, if you're well, elected as you president? point out, Judy, there are two things coming together here. There is the failure to check gun violence in the United States, and there is the racist rhetoric that the president has employed to create an atmosphere that empowers people to take on these acts. So let's start with the first one, the failure to check gun violence in the United States. This, these are the El Paso and Dayton are 250th and 251st mass shootings this year in the United States. We have had, don't forget Parkland, don't forget Sandy Hook. This has been decades of unchecked violence, gun violence in the country. And why is that? It's because the gun manufacturers through the NRA control the Republican Party and common sense gun legislation that over 90% of American citizens support can't get into law because of that corporate control of the Senate. And you're saying you would go after those corporations. But let me point out that it was under Democratic President <clears throat> Obama, legislation even on, on background checks would, could not get passed. So now you have other Democrats running for president who are talking about tougher measures, gun licensing, gun buyback programs. Do you have a worry that Democrats in advocating these kinds of things could go so far to the left that there could be some kind of blowback? No. Over 90 percent of Americans want mandatory background checks on every gun purchase. There is no question here that the will of the American people is being frustrated, and it's being frustrated by gun manufacturers through the NRA. And, and this is just one example. I think it does in this case, to be fair. Look, I've been going after this idea of corporate control of our government. That is the motivating idea behind my campaign. But let me say, I am the person who almost two years ago said, impeach this president. Right. He's deeply corrupt, and he, he has more than met the criteria, and he needs to be, go. And that, and that, in fact, is what many people will recognize you for. You are running, been running millions of dollars in ads on television and, and elsewhere, arguing for the impeachment of President Trump. A few months ago, you said this is something that had to happen this year. It couldn't happen in 2020. But here we are. It's almost the fall. Even the de Democratic congressional leadership is not in favor of an impeachment process. Where is this going? Look, Judy, I mean, the funny thing is, more than half the congressional Democrats have come out publicly for impeachment. I've pushed to get as many televised hearings in front of the American people, because what we were really trying to do with impeachment is let the American people decide. Have televised hearings. Let all our research said, if the American people get the facts, they say, I didn't know that. He's a liar and a crook. And if I did that, I'd go to jail. But yes or no, you think it can happen this year? I think time is extremely short, Judy. We're still pushing for it. We'll never walk away right. from the fact that the right thing is to impeach and remove this president. But time is extremely short because the only way to get this done is to bring in the American people. And that means televised hearings like the ones in Watergate that convinced the American people that Richard Nixon was a crook yeah. who had to go. 
climate change. This has been a passion of yours. You've worked on this issue for years. You spent hundreds of millions of dollars uh, advocating. There, there are some environmental activists out there who are saying Tom Steyer would be much better off continuing to focus on climate change rather than turning his focus to running for president. What do you say to them and to those who point to your record managing a hedge fund where you invested in things like coal mines around the world that were carbon emit emitters, ultimately, mm -hmm. and companies that, frankly, invested in these, these uh, private prisons where uh, detention facilities mm -hmm. for migrants on the border? So let me answer. Let me first answer the investment question, and then I'll talk about what I'm doing now in terms of climate change. Look, we invested in everything, every part of the American economy, including fossil fuels. And I decided over 10 years ago, oh my gosh, I realized there is this impact on the climate that's going to be dreadful, and we need, I need to divest myself from it. I quit my business. I took the giving pledge to give my money to good causes, and I started organizing coalitions to fight to prevent climate change right then. That's exactly what I've been asking other Americans to do. We all grew up in a fossil fuel-based economy, including you. We've all filled up at the pump. That is where we came from. We need to go to a different place, and that's what I've been pushing for for more than 10 years, successfully beating oil companies. In terms of the private prisons, we made an investment. I thought about it. I decided that is not the right thing to do. It was a mistake, and I sold it 15 years before any of this political stuff came because I said that's not a place where somebody should be making money, including us. It was a mistake to ever buy it, and we sold it. And we, that was 15 or 17 years ago. But let me answer this, this last question, Judy, which was what am I, why is this a way to attack climate change? If you've seen the climate proposal that I put out about two weeks ago, it is the most aggressive climate proposal by far in this campaign. It talks about declaring a state of emergency the first day of my presidency. It talks about you basically being animated by environmental justice, going to most affected communities and getting their ideas of leadership to make sure the program works for them. And it talks about l start trying to lead an international coalition on day one, not the idea of signing back up for Paris. Of course we'd sign up back up for Paris. That is far from enough. If you look at the numbers in climate, and I would challenge these climate activists to talk about how they're going to make an impact. If you look at the numbers on climate, it is an emergency. The president should de deal with it that way because we're talking about the health and safety of every American. And we can't do it unless the global community comes along with us unless we lead it and unless we've made the commitment to get our house in order. Tom Steyer running for the Democratic nomination. Thank you Judy, very much. Judy, thank you so much for having me.